LGBT crosses every race of people. Yeah. And so uh, there are different races, cultures, and creeds that are working at Out Memphis, try to give a, a, at least every facet their own safe space as much as possible. Um, and we've been focusing on Blackness. Hey y'all, my name is Brandon and welcome to episode three of Guilt Free Chats. So we're a series that introduces new and inspiring people we come across in life. These are people who sit on boards, um, innovative thinkers, artists, entrepreneurs, workerpreneurs, and anyone within the community that does a great, that does great things within themselves and shares it with the community. And that guys, we have someone here today that does just that. That's Aaron. Aaron is the board chairman of Out Memphis and a founding board member of the Mid-South LGBT Chamber of Commerce. Uh, she works for an investment firm and assists businesses with connecting to the LGBT community in the tri-state area. Hey, Aaron, how you doing? Good, Brandon. How you doing? I can't complain. I can't complain. So you ready to get to it? Yeah. Thanks for having me today. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for being on. So the first question is for those who may not know, because we got people watching from all over. Uh, can you tell us exactly what is Out Memphis and what do y'all do there? Well, of course, Out Memphis is an LGBTQ community center. In addition to that, we do a lot with the community as far as HIV testing. Uh, we have a youth emergency center, which takes in LGBTQ kids once they've been kicked out of their homes. So we do have a shelter. Uh, we feed them. We give them job training and things of that nature. Also, we have several different services for every facet of the LGBTQ community. We have senior services. Uh, we pay rents for people who uh, need rental assistance. So it's just pretty much a, an organization that cares for the LGBTQ community of the Mid-South. Wow, I did not know that you guys did all that. So I just want to piggyback, follow up with that one. You said you guys do like child outreach and you like help kids and all that. Like, can you dive a little deeper into like, how does that work? Like if a kid needed services with that? Yes, of course. So um, Cooper, which is the, the community center in the Cooper Young area, uh, when we would open the doors, a lot of times we would have children asleep on the steps because um, the families would kick out their kids and they would have nowhere to go. And they knew that the center was a safe place. So to answer that call, because that just kept happening over and over, we built the Youth Emergency Center, which is the first of its kind in this area. And uh, when a child comes to the Youth Emergency Center, uh, if they're 18 to 24, they have units in where they could stay. If they're younger than that, uh, we pair them up with uh, people who are social workers and things of that nature and try to get them placed, at least until they're old enough for us to to help. So we don't we don't necessarily keep kids, but we take them and put them, give them the resources that they would need to survive. Wow. That's amazing. I did not know that at all. Wow. That's that's amazing. Yeah. So the next question is I know you talked about like the elderly, children, and things of that nature, but what about like the black LGBT community here in the Memphis area? Like are there any organization or program that's specifically for them? Well, yes, we do have uh, quite a few organizations. It's uh, Sister Reach is one of them. We also, uh, most of the people that we serve at Out Memphis is 95% Black. So, yeah, so the majority of, of our people are Black people. We do have quite a few um, different areas. Uh, Friends for Life is one that serves the Black community, Black LGBT community uh, through the Haven and the Corner. Um, so we, we have quite a few, there are at least 10 LGBT organizations in the city that, uh, cater to black people. So we're trying to get out the word and let them know, Hey, this isn't just for a certain facet. It's for all of us. Gotcha. I see. That makes mm -hmm. complete sense. So it's for the whole community, not just specifically just for one group or people may assume that it's only just for this certain segment, but it's for the whole community to help in general, right? True. Uh, LGBT crosses every race of people. Yep. And so uh, there are different races, cultures, and creeds that are working at Out Memphis and are being reached out to from Out Memphis. And so we just want to make sure that we try to give it, it, 
at least every facet their own safe space as much as possible. Um, and we've been focusing on black. It's, you know, Memphis is 68 percent black. Yep. And um, so now our leadership, as well as uh, the staff, reflects that population a whole lot more. Mm, I see. So before it wasn't always the case. So when did I, not that is reminding me when did out Memphis start? Because I know like I've been here for about 12 years or so, but I don't know, like when exactly did it start? Well, it started, it had a name change and a, a branding change. It was the Memphis Gay and Lesbian Community Center, which has been in operation for 30 years. But then once the rainbow expanded from the primary colors to, you know, the whole prism, we realized Memphis Gay and Lesbian Community Center left out at least two other letters. Yep. So we rebranded to out Memphis to make sure that we cover uh, the trans, bi, non-binary, all the other ones, so they would all feel welcome. But the organization itself has been in existence for over 30 years. Wow. Okay. I did not know that. So I have another question for you. Like, I know you was talking about like the kids being unfortunately left at the doorstep and their families just having those issues with their kids, unfortunately. So like, what words would you share with an individual like that who's struggling with living their truth within themselves and then learning how to like share it with others and still loving who they are? Why not feel okay. any type of way about it? Okay. Because it's impractical to come out for certain people before they're able to stand on their own two feet, I would say come out to yourself first. You know, make sure that you get solid within yourself. Out Memphis has several different resources, as well as if you just look up LGBT support on Google and maybe your zip code, you'll find several different resources that are available to you. When you are able to stand on your own two feet, let's say if I'm talking to maybe somebody 15, 16, who has uh, parents that are not accepting, I wouldn't say bust down the closet yet, but make sure that you take care of the roof of your head, over your head first. And then when you are able to stand on your own two, then feel free to live within your truth. But take that time, invest that time to do what it takes to get solid within yourself. Find out you know, look up any sort of article that, that would tell you what a gay person is or, you know, um, reconcile your faith. There are different, there's affirming theologies, affirming churches that are in the area. Uh, um, Cathedral of Praise is one of them. Church on the River. I mean, there are different things that you would need to tackle within yourself to be able to be a good LGBTQ citizen and a whole one. I'd say focus on uh, mental health and wholeness. And then uh, once you're solid within yourself, it becomes a bit easier to stand and say, mom, dad, family, this is who I am without feeling any sort of uh, shame or guilt or anything that would come with the negative connotations of people putting their expectations on you. It has to come from the in, from inside out and not the other way around. So it sounds like it's just like everything else in life, right? Like I said, we all have human experiences that we have to grow from within and love mm -hmm. ourselves before we can share that light to everybody else. There's no difference. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. So um, like I know you said you're the, you're on the board, you're the chairperson, uh, the chair board chairman of Out Memphis. So like what do you guys have coming up? I know spring is right around the corner. You guys have any like awesome events or any new buildings coming up or anything like that? Yeah, actually, we do have uh, several awesome events. We have uh, Black LGBT Fair coming up on the 28th, where uh, we talk about the specific Black experience. We have mental health resources, spa resources, just different things uh, to take care of the Black individual, uh, LGBT individual. So I definitely come out to that. And uh, we are trying to expand the youth LGBT, uh, excuse me, the youth emergency center. We're also trying to expand our center on Cooper, get more room and everything because we're getting a whole lot more activity and we're outgrowing where we are. So it's uh, quite a few things that are on the pipeline coming up. And um, right now, our focus has been uh, trying to reach out to uh, Nashville government because I don't know if you heard. But the governor cut the funding for HIV testing 
And um, yeah, so it's about $9 million on the table that uh, Joe Biden has offered to the state of Tennessee to help us as far as Shelby County and every county in the state of Tennessee to expand HIV testing. And um, our, our state leadership has chosen to not take those funds. And so that's affecting not just out Memphis, but other organizations that do that within the city. So uh, we uh, recently went to Day on the Hill yesterday. Well, let's see, today is Friday, so it would have been two days ago yeah. to try to um, talk to our state leadership and let them know, hey, this is detrimental to our community and everything. And we would uh, urge you to reconsider taking those federal funds to help us help people down here. Even uh, yeah. the Shelby County mayor wrote, penned a letter to the governor to get that done. So we have a lot of uh, a lot of legal initiatives that we're trying to do, these trans bills and all these things. So it, it's kind of like because of the nature of our business, we have to focus on several different things at once, mm -hmm. meet our immediate needs, and then uh, try to help the government help us as well and, and keep those lines of communications open. So, yeah, we got a lot going on. But come on down on the 28th. It'll, it's a good time. Okay, and that's um, but that's I don't know when they be watching this, but the twenty eighth is um basically like just a week, a little bit over eleven days from now, then right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so then that's that again? Uh, it's uh eight ninety two Cooper. Eight ninety two Cooper. Also at you guys' headquarters. Right. Okay. Cool. Right. So Cooper right. and Young, just look for the flags, and uh, we'll be there with open arms, ready to receive it. Cool. I have one last question for you, real quick. Um, cause I noticed you said you guys assist businesses. Like what exactly, how do you assist businesses with connecting with the LGBT community? Like how does that work? Well, that's a, a different hat. That's the mid South LGBT chamber of commerce. Okay. And, um, so there are a lot of fortune 500s most recent, uh, forward with the uh, blue oval city that's coming next year, mm -hmm. um, who are interested in connecting to LGBTQ owned or, uh, operated businesses in the city. Okay. And what we're aiming to do is uh, put together, or uh, I should say, organize and connect the LGBTQ business owners with uh, Fortune 500 corporations that would be interested in their services and things of that nature to kind of, you know, have a symbiotic relationship, similar to how the Greater Memphis Chamber will reach out to, uh, let's say, a FedEx or a AutoZone or something like that to um, build the area and share resources with smaller businesses. And we're just doing the same. Cool. That's awesome. I mean, I never, I never knew all this stuff was going on. I mean, you don't know until you ask and you know how much amazing things are going on in the city of Memphis. Cause unfortunately so time, so many times the media only shows one side of Memphis, even to sure. us and then especially to everyone else, but you don't hear like all the awesome good that like Memphians and everyone else within the city are doing for the whole community of the city to make the city a whole place. So right. I love One it. Thing that's hmm? common about Memphians is that we're all movers and shakers in our own right. Yep. You know, and a lot of us have, you know, we live in our silos. We work and we hustle where we are, but we don't necessarily look to the left or right to see what everybody else is doing. Yep. But we're trying to change that and connect everybody and realize that, hey, we're all a force to be reckoned with, and we could do a whole lot more together than we could ever do apart. That's exactly right. I mean, I think those words are an excellent way to end it, guys. I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, I I can't top those words. Those are like king level words. <laughs> so, with, with that being said, y'all, I mean, I would like to thank Aaron for coming on today on the show. All right, guys, and with that being said, as always, remember to continue to live the your free lifestyle. Peace. Peace.